Discussions on Dating Chapter 1 I cannot go on a date with you, Dawn said on the phone. She was in Northern California for the summer. College was over until next term. She was enjoying the long summer break, but she missed her friend, Dan. He had gone to Nevada to take college courses over the summer. Dawn knew her friend liked her. He had liked her for a long time, but he had never had the courage to ask her out until now, over the phone. Yes, you can go on a date with me, he said. Dawn was twisting her long dark hair around her finger. She was lying on her bed in her bedroom. She was trying to think of an excuse to say. My parents would kill me if I dated you, why Dan asked. He was in Nevada several hours away by car. Dan was outside, sitting in a park. He had met Dawn's parents. He knew they did not like him. He had a lot of tattoos and earrings. His blonde hair was very spiky, and his clothes were a little wild. Dawn's family was conservative. They didn't like wild. So, Dan knew the reason why. He didn't need her to answer his question. Instead, he asked, do you have to tell your parents? Of course I have to tell them. I don't keep secrets. But, you are a grown woman. Look, you're a nice guy, Dan Don said. But she didn't get to finish. I am, Dan said, interrupting. You rewrite, I really am a great guy. A terrific guy. Your parents would love me if they knew me better. They would adore me. I'm sure they would like you eventually. Maybe not love or adore, but yes, sure, they would think you are boyfriend material. Or don't say anything to them. I'm sorry, Don, but you're being very old-fashioned. What is wrong with that? I can't lie to my morn and dad, Don said, sitting up on her bed. I won't. What? Lying? Say nothing to them, Dan argued. He watched a woman jog by with her dog. Don't tell them about me. That is not lying. Yes, it is, she said. It is a lie by omission. Oh, you are using the big words. Omission if you don't say anything. If you say nothing about me to them. Then I have omitted the facts, Dawn said in a serious voice. But... She was only messing around. She was not really being very serious. Anyways, omission is not a big word. I am failing my English class, Dan admitted. English was his second language. He was still learning. So, it is a big word to me. If it is, then we're finished, she said, joking. I cannot date someone with a small vocabulary. Ah, but you would date me otherwise. Don laughed. I guess you got me. Yes, I mean, I like you. There, I said it. Okay. You said you like me, Dan replied. He had been sitting on a park bench. Now he stood up. Great. But that does nothing for me. What do you mean she had not expected him to say that? Think about it, he said. Saying you like me makes it worse. Now I know you like me, so why can't we date? This is frustrating. Let me finish, Dawn said. She got up from her bed. She was walking around the room. I'm joking with you, Dan. I'll go out with you. When you are finished with your classes and you come back to California, we can see each other. But I do have to tell my folks. This was great news for Dan. His classes would be over next month, but he still wondered why she had to talk to her parents. It was very strange to him. What do you need from them? You want to get their permission. No, not their permission, she explained. But it is our culture. You know, my family is not from America. We have different traditions where I am from. I know that. My family is the same. Yes, we came from another country. Where we come from, we respect our parents. We include our mothers and fathers in our daily lives. That isn't fair to say that. 
I respect my parents too, you do? Do you include them in your daily life, Dan? Well, Dan said, thinking. He did not really see them very often. He was away from home and did not go visit them very often. And he did not ask their advice about things, but Dan did not want to tell Dawn any of that. I try to call them every week, he said. That is not the same thing, but it does not matter. When will you be done with your summer term at college? It is over next month. This is a very short term, you know. I am only taking these classes to make up for last term. I did not do well in class last term. Yes, I heard about that. You failed two classes, Dawn said. But I know you are very smart. You can do it. Thanks, he said. I do study a lot. In fact, my teachers know that I am a good student, but the classes are all in English. That is why I have trouble sometimes. Dawn nodded. She understood completely. She had also had trouble last year in college, then she hired a professional tutor. The tutor helped her a lot. When you come back, I'm going to help you study English, she said. I will show you everything my tutor taught me. Really? That will help me a lot, Dan said, but I need to do something first. What is that? Before you can be my tutor, he said, smiling, I will need to ask my parents. Very funny, Dawn said. Just for that, I am going to be a very tough tutor. Chapter 2 Caprice loved talking on the telephone. She enjoyed chatting with her friends especially about their boyfriends. It was a rainy day outside, and she was bored. She decided to call her old friend Dawn. She had heard a rumor and wanted to learn the truth. So Dawn, she said, did you know Jack is in Nevada now? Really, Dawn said, I remember your boyfriend Jack. He's cute, very handsome. What's he doing out there in Nevada? He's talking summer classes. In fact, you'll never guess where. You're right, Dawn said. She hated guessing games. Besides, she was in a hurry. It was almost time to start work. She was putting her clothes out on the bed. She was not really paying attention. Nevada is a big state. I do not know where Jack could be. Jack is at the same college as Dan. Oh, that's interesting, Dawn said. She was not sure why Caprice was telling her this. I'm sure Jack and Dan will be glad to hang out together. Do they know each other very well? Caprice smiled. They know each other a little. They are becoming friends. In fact, they have been talking a lot lately. So Don Dan told Jack that you two are dating. Oh, so that's what this call is about, Don thought. Well, I would not say we are dating. But I told him we could date. When he returns to California. Come on, don't be shy. I'm your friend. Tell me everything. You know, I used to date Dan. We dated two years ago when we were freshmen in college. I remember that, Dawn said. She remembered, but not very well. Caprice dated a lot. So, did you think you could keep this a secret from me? Dawn was getting ready for work. She looked at her clock. There were only 20 minutes to get dressed and get to her job. She did not have a lot of time to talk. There isn't much to tell, Caprice. And I'm in a little bit of a hurry. Just give me the main details, then. Okay, fine. You are very persistent. Dan asked me to date him, but he didn't ask when he was here. He waited until he had gone to Nevada. Men. They have very bad timing, don't they? I remember Dan was always late for things. Dawn wanted to switch the subject. She did not want to think about Dan and Caprice as a couple. What about you and Jack? Jack is so nice. You guys were seeing each other a long time. Are you two still a couple? Not really, Caprice said. She had not told anyone this before. Actually, we broke up before he left for Nevada. Oh, I didn't know that. You never told me. 
I'm sorry. So, you do not see him anymore. We broke up on good terms. We are still friends. But how can I say this? Jack was not a good boyfriend. Dawn knew her friend was very picky about her boyfriends. That is why there had been so many of them. Caprice usually only dated a person a few times, but she had stayed with Jack for a few months. Everyone thought they were a nice couple. In fact, Dawn thought Jack might even be the big one. She was shocked to hear anything negative about Jack. Not a good boyfriend. Why? What did he do? She checked her clock again. She was running out of time, but she wanted to hear this, so she put the phone on speakerphone. She was able to dress while talking and listening. Capri said, For starters, Jack likes to flirt with other women. Oh no! Are you serious? Was he? Was he cheating on you? I don't think so. No, I am sure he was not seeing anyone else, but I do not like my boyfriends to even look at someone else. Dawn shrugged her shoulders. Boys will be boys. Looking isn't touching. I mean, looking does not mean anything. You never looked at somebody else. Maybe I did, but Jack was not just looking, he was talking to them too. He was flirting with them. Where? What? Where was he talking to other women, Dawn asked? At the nightclub. Where he works. Yes, he still works at Zara's, my mom's nightclub. He is a bartender. He serves drinks to pretty girls all night long. Dawn laughed, then covered her mouth. What's so funny, Caprice asked. She was getting a little angry. Sorry. Didn't you help him get that job? Caprice did not like to be reminded about that. Yeah, I did help him get the job. If I could go back in time, I would stop myself. Well, Caprice, be fair. If Jack is a bartender, then it is his job to talk to customers. I guess so. You guess so? Come on, be reasonable. You are not being fair. I mean, if he is talking to people at the club. He's flirting with them. He is not just talking. There is a big difference. Don't be naive. I'm not naive. You're being too picky. Maybe he is only speaking that way for tips. You know, he gets more money if he is extra nice. There is no reason to be jealous. He is only talking to be nice. He does not have to be that nice. Besides, you would not like it if Dan was acting that way. You would be jealous, wouldn't you? No. Maybe I would not care. Right now, it does not matter. I am not yet dating Dan. Hmm? That's true. You are single. So if you are going to take Jack's side, then you date him. And I'll take Dan. What? Are you crazy? Dawn asked. She did not have any time left. Look, I have to go to work. I know you are joking, but that isn't funny. You said you do not get jealous. What's the problem? Caprice asked. Dawn sighed. She grabbed something to eat from her kitchen. She was going to have to eat at work. We can have this conversation later. I do not have time to argue she hung up the phone without saying goodbye to her friend. Chapter 3 Dan was very excited. His summer college courses were almost over. He was doing well in the courses. He would get good grades. Good grades will help my grade point average, he thought. When I go back to my university in California, maybe I will get a scholarship. He was glad to be leaving Nevada soon. In two weeks, he would be home. He could see Dawn again. She had promised to go on a date with him when he returned. They had known each other a long time, but he had never had the courage to ask her out. It had been easier to ask over the phone. It was easier to ask when he was not there. In some ways, it did not seem real. Dating Dawn had been his dream. Soon, that dream is going to come true. His phone rang. It was his friend Jack. He had known Jack for a long time, 
but they had never been close friends. Now, they were going to the same summer school. Now, they were becoming good friends. Sometimes they ate lunch together. At night, they liked to watch movies together, when their studies were over. But Dan had always noticed that Jack was a little sad. Something was always bothering Jack, and now, Dan knew what it was. Hi, Jack, he said, answering the phone. Dan. Hey, I need to talk to you. That's funny. I wanted to talk to you too. Oh, Jack said, a little surprised. All right, you can go first. What's going on? Don told me you are not seeing Caprice anymore. Jack was surprised again. He and Caprice had not made their breakup public. That's true, Jack admitted. I didn't want to say anything. I was hoping Caprice and I would get back together. That is what I wanted to talk about, Dan said. I could tell something has been bothering you, but I did not know what. I was worried about you. Thanks, man. I'm okay, though, really. Are you sure, Dan asked. Do you want to talk about what happened? Oh, you know how women are, Jack said. He laughed, even though he did not think it was funny. He was still friends with Caprice, but his feelings were very hurt. He did not think she had been fair to him. She thought I was flirting with other women. She accused me of trying to attract a new girlfriend. Really? I have not known you very long, Dan said. I mean, I did not know you very well, but I do now. You are a nice guy. That does not sound like you. It isn't, Jack agreed. It felt good to have someone to talk to. I never did that. But Caprice thinks I did. I cannot change her mind. She thinks I flirted with my customers. But you didn't. I did a little, but it was not really flirting. Just being extra nice. You know what I mean? It was totally innocent. Dan asked, What do you mean? I only did it to get bigger tips, Jack said. That is how those types of jobs work. You don't get paid very much, so you have to work for tips. Dan nodded. I understand. I worked as a waiter in a restaurant. My salary was very low, but I was friendly. The customers loved me, so I made better tips than the others. Yes, that is exactly right, Jack said. It is simple. Why can't Caprice understand that? Hey, maybe you could talk to her. Dan thought about that. I don't think that is a good idea, Jack. Why not? I have to tell you something. It is not a big deal, but you should know. I dated Caprice for a little while not very long, and it was a long time ago. Yes, I know, Jack said. So what? Well, Caprice is awesome, Dan said. She is great. I will be honest, I liked her a lot back then, but actually she was jealous of me too. What? She thought you were flirting with others Jack couldn't believe it. He was not the first guy to deal with this problem. That's right. It sounds like you are having the same issue I had. Jack was glad to be able to talk about these things. It was a relief. He had been quiet about his feelings. But now, he talked. But Jack had forgotten he wanted to ask Dan something, too. Dan, I have a question. I started talking about my problems and I forgot to ask you. That's okay. What's up? It's about Dawn. You mentioned you were going to start dating her. Yes, I have wanted to go out with her for a long time but I was always too shy. I never asked her out, but finally I did. And she said yes. Dan paused. Why was he asking about Dawn suddenly? Yes, she wanted to talk to her parents first. That's what she said. But why does she want to do that? I don't know. She said she likes to keep them involved in her life. Doesn't that sound strange to you? No. Maybe a little bit. Why are you asking this, Jack? 
I was just curious, Jack said. Because she's... She's what? You know she comes to Zara sometimes. The bar I work at. Dan didn't know that, but it did not matter to him. Lots of people go to the nightclub. Why do I need to know about that? Because she is one of my customers. I need to tell you something, Dan. I think Dawn is very cute. Sometimes I talk to her when she comes to the club. I was thinking about asking her on a date. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe.